Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today I wanted to show you guys how to install RetroPie 3.6 on your Raspberry Pi 1, your Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, or Raspberry Pi 0. Now for this tutorial, I am using Raspberry Pi 3. I also have a SanDisk Class 4 SD card. It's 16 gigabytes. Let's go ahead and get started. First up, you're going to need the image for RetroPie, and you can obtain the image by going to blog.petrockblock.com forward slash RetroPie forward slash. This link will also be in the description, or you can just search Google for RetroPie. Now, when we come to um, their main page at Pet Rock Blog, we're going to go right here to where it says RetroPie Project, and we're going to scroll down to Downloads. Now, if you're using a Raspberry Pi 1 or a Raspberry Pi 0, you want to download this first image. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 3, you want to download this image here. So I'm using the 3. And you want to go ahead and get the standard version for this tutorial. I have already downloaded it and placed it in a folder on my desktop. Next, we're going to need to get Win32 Disk Imager. Now this is on SourceForge and the link will be in the description also. Go ahead and download it because you're going to need this to install the RetroPie image to your SD card. And one last thing I recommend is downloading SD card formatter. Now first time you install RetroPie on your SD card you will be fine. But after you put it back in your PC, if you want to reformat the card and use it for something else, it will only show up as a 52 megabyte card and you will need SD card formatter to format the card to bring it back to whatever size. So mine is a 16 gigabyte card. After I format it with SD card formatter, I'll have my 16 gigabytes back to my card that I can use for a different application. So now that we've done that, I have taken my RetroPie. It comes as a zipped file here. Now some people are getting this where it says RetroPie version 3.6, Raspi 2, Raspi 3, .image.gz. Now if you get the .gz behind this, just go ahead and use 7-zip to unzip it. So I'm going to extract it now. And I'll fast forward this for you. All right, so that's done. Now this is the folder I just unzipped it into. We have our RetroPie disk image file. Next up, we want to go ahead and open up Win32 Disk Imager. So this is the interface for the Win32 Disk Imager. It's super simple. What you want to do is come to your blue folder right here. Now we need to navigate and find that RetroPie image that we just extracted. Then we need to make sure that our SD card is inserted into the PC and readable right here. And mine is um, device E, but you need to make sure that your device uh, corresponds to the same letter. So we see here, my hard drive is C, my SD card is E, yours could be different. So just make sure that this is the same as your SD card right here. So we're gonna be writing to the SD card. I'm gonna go ahead and write, and I will fast forward this for you guys. Okay, now that the image is written to the SD card successfully, we're gonna remove the SD card from the computer, from your SD card reader. We're going to place it into the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to power it on. I'll show you how to set up the controller, load ROMs, and load BIOSes. This is the first boot after we uh, inserted the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Just waiting for it to come up. I need to mention that I do have a USB Xbox 360 controller connected. As you can see, it's detected my gamepad. Just need to set it up by holding the A button. 
and then just follow the on-screen prompts and you should have no trouble setting up your USB controller. We'll press A here. Now we are at the emulation station front end and you can see there already are a few emulators listed here. Now there's a couple ROMs that come with it. Um, they're ports. So let's see what those are. Got Cave Story, Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, Quake, Quake 3 Arena. But if you're looking through here and you're saying, why don't I see N64, SNES, Sega Genesis, all those good ones, it's because you don't have ROMs loaded. So we're going to go back to the PC. I'm going to show you how to load ROMs from a USB stick first, and then I will show you how to load ROMs from a network. I'm back at the PC, and I still have my Raspberry Pi running on a different monitor here. We need to get some ROMs on the unit, so there are several ways to do this. First way I'm going to show you is how to do it. Most common practice is using the USB stick. Any size USB stick will work. I have a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0 stick, and I have formatted it FAT32. So make sure you're formatted FAT32. As you can see, the USB stick is empty. What we need to do is create a folder inside of here. We're going to go down, New Folder, and we're going to name it RetroPie, all lowercase. Now that we have the folder created on the clean USB stick, we're going to open it up, and it's empty, as you can see. So now, we just need to take the USB stick out of the PC and place it into the Raspberry Pi while it's running emulation station, while it's powered on. And the best way to do this is have a USB stick with a light. What it's going to do is write two folders inside of the RetroPie folder that you just created. One will be named configs and the other will be named ROMs. So I'm going to pull the USB stick now I'm going to pull the USB stick now, and I'm going to place it into the Raspberry Pi while it's running. I have a light on my USB stick so I can see when it's done flashing. That should mean it's done writing to the USB stick. And it can time varies. It can take anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes. The USB is done flashing. I'm going to pull it from the Raspberry Pi and place it back into the computer. Here's the USB stick we created the RetroPie folder in. We're going to open up that RetroPie folder. And now there are two folders that were automatically created by placing the USB stick back into the running Raspberry Pi. You have your configs and your ROMs. We want to focus on the ROMs folder. We're going to open this up. I'm just going to snap it over here. Now you can see all the emulators that are built into the RetroPie. And all you need to do is drag and drop your ROMs into the corresponding folder. So I have a few ROMs here. I have my SNES and I'll just take these and I will find my SNES folder and I will just copy them to the USB stick. We'll go back on both of these. I have my N64 and I'm going to just copy a few of these and place them into the N64 folder. And when they're done copying we're gonna go back to the Raspberry Pi for a second. We're going to pull the USB stick back out of the computer and place it back into the Retro Pi, to the Raspberry Pi. 
back at the Raspberry Pi. I have my USB stick in my hand. I am now inserting it into the Raspberry Pi. And like I said, have a light on your USB stick. That will be the best way to do this. Now it's going to flash for a little while, and that means that the ROMs that we just copied into the ROMs folder on the USB stick are copying to the SD card that you installed RetroPie on. So we're just going to scroll through here and show you that we don't have N64 or SNES listed yet. I'm going to reboot one time. You can press start on your controller. Quit. Restart emulation station. Now that we've restarted, we're going to scroll over. We have our N64 with all the ROMs that we just copied to the USB stick. And we should have a Super Nintendo, which is right here. We have all the ROMs that we copied to the Super Nintendo ROMs folder. So you can go ahead and start playing your Super Nintendo and N64. But what about PlayStation? Now bigger ROMs or bigger ISOs are hard to copy from the USB stick. Anything over one gigabyte usually will not copy from the USB stick to your SD card. So you are going to need to use network transfer. Now it's built into Windows if you have network sharing enabled. I will show you now. We're going back to the PC. Now we're at the PC again. I have my computer connected to the same exact network that my Raspberry Pi is connected to. Now I'm connected over Ethernet to the same router on my PC and my Raspberry Pi. I have my network sharing enabled. If you don't know how to do that, you can Google it. It's all over the place. But let's go ahead and transfer some ROMs over network. We're going to open up a file manager. And under network here, if you get lucky, sometimes your retro pie will be listed. Make sure everything's connected. So I don't see it here. The best thing to do is go to your search bar and type in forward slash or backslash backslash all capital retro pie and press enter. We are now in the retro pie over network. So we can go right in and see the ROMs that we had installed are right here on the SD card already. I'm going to snap this. We're going to open up another window here. So you can see we have BIOSes, config, ROMs, and splash screens. If you want to change the splash screen when it starts up, you can. I don't mess with it. I love the RetroPie one. So, But BIOSes. In order to play PlayStation, you're going to need a BIOS. Now, Game Boy Advance needs a BIOS. Amiga needs a Kick ROM, which is just like a BIOS. There are several. Dreamcast also needs a BIOS. You just open up your BIOS folder. Now, we're connected to the Raspberry Pi over network. And drag and drop your PlayStation BIOS or whichever BIOS you're installing. And... To install larger ROMs over network is the best way. We're going to open up ROMs. We're going to scroll down until we see PlayStation PSX, which is PlayStation 1. And I have a PlayStation game here, Bloody Roar. I'm going to copy it over. Now this could take a second. This is almost a 600 megabyte file. When this is done, you will have your PlayStation BIOS installed on your Raspberry Pi and your PlayStation game. You can transfer all of your games over network if you'd like to. Now, it is it is easier to do it this way for me. I like doing it this way. It's actually faster. 
And if you can get your RetroPie to show up on your Mac or your PC under your network, it's just simpler. It's right there. As long as they're both connected to the same network, you shouldn't have any problem. We can see here, we can go back into our ROMs folder and you just drag and drop whatever ROMs you want in the corresponding emulator folder. Now we're going to wait for this to transfer and then we'll go right back to that Raspberry Pi and we'll test out some PlayStation emulation. We're going back to the Raspberry Pi. Last time we're back at the Raspberry Pi. And we just need to reboot one more time after we transferred the BIOS and the PlayStation ROM over network. So we'll just hit start, quit, and restart emulation station. And when we're done here, sorry, I have a bad HDMI cable. And when we're done here, we will have PlayStation listed and we can go ahead and play some PSX games. Let's see if PlayStation's here. There we are. Now we'll just start this game and I'll show you real quick. So when you start this, if your BIOS is not the correct BIOS or it's not installed, it will tell you that there's no BIOS present and it will not start the game. So we know that the BIOS is installed correctly because the game started. And PlayStation runs amazing on the Raspberry Pi 3. It runs great on the Raspberry Pi 2 also, but the 3 is just a little more powerful. Okay, so to exit um, most of the emulators, you press Act. If you're using a keyboard, it's either exit or control C. So that's it, guys. That's how you install RetroPie 3.6 on your Raspberry Pi. That's how you install ROMs using USB or network. And also how to transfer your... So the Dreamcast needs a BIOS. The Game Boy Advance needs a... Uh, Amiga needs a BIOS. There are a bunch of emulators that require a BIOS. And you just install them the same way I just showed you. I also will leave a link in the description on how to overclock your Raspberry Pi 3 running RetroPie 3.6. If you guys got any questions, any comments, leave them in the comment section or send me a private message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And like always, thanks for watching.